Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be carrying out a synchronization of the carburetors on the Triumph Sprint 900. Now, if you saw the previous videos, uh, obviously I've had the carbs completely stripped to pieces and um, put them back together after cleaning them and all that good stuff. So what we need to do is obviously uh, fire the bike up, make sure that it's running okay, and then synchronize the carburetors. Now, Carb sinking is simply the process of adjusting the carbs so that they pass the same amount of uh, fuel and air mixture into each of the cylinders. Um, and we do this by measuring the vacuum at each carburetor. Um, carbs that are out of sync will um, result in a decreased fuel mileage, increased engine temperature, um, and a less than ideal throttle response and you'll probably get higher vibration uh, levels through the bike. Um, so in order to synchronize the carburetors, what we need to use is a, some, a vacuum gauge of some sort of kind. Um, a manometer, uh, such as a mercury one, with the, it looks like um, tubes with uh, mercury in. Um, they're quite expensive. They are incredibly accurate. I do have a DigiSync digital carburetor um, synchronization tool however not everyone's got one of those so what I'm going to use for this video is an old-school dial vacuum gauge these are incredibly cheap I'll stick a link in the uh, description below so you can go and have a look uh, incredibly cheap and within within the affordability of most people that would need to do this job certainly cheaper than taking it to a dealer anyway okay right so in order to prep the bike for um, synchronization what we need to do is we need to remove the fuel tank now that may seem counterintuitive because obviously we need fuel in order to run the bike and synchronize the carbs but what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up a temporary uh fuel tank uh, which i'm going to hang from the uh from the garage door above me um that will just provide enough fuel for us to run the bike for as long as we need to um so yeah so what i'll do i'll get on with that i'll get the tank off i'll get it all set up get my sink uh, tools um, set up so it's hanging again as well so we can see it and then I'll bring it back when we're ready to start. Okay, as you can see, what I've got here is a temporary fuel tank made out of uh, a chopped up Coke bottle and then hung from the garage roof with a hose that goes into the fuel line and it's currently got a clamp on it, which is basically acting as my fuel tap. So when I release that, fuel will be allowed to flow into the, uh, into the carburetors. Now, um, carb synchronization or carb balancing as it is sometimes uh, referred to for the sake of clarity, we'll uh, just, I just want to confirm that they're both the same thing, balancing and synchronization. Um, it should be done with the engine completely up to standard operating temperature. So what I need to do is fire the engine up, run it up. Um, obviously, it's going to need choke to start. And once it's up to temperature, what I need to do then is set the idle speed. Now, the manual says that the idle speed for this bike should be 1000 RPM plus or minus 50 RPM. So 950 to 1050 RPM. Um, once it's up to temperature, that is when we can actually carry out the synchronization process. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a bit of choke. Um, obviously what I need, there'll be a bit of fuel in the carburetors, but I need to take my little tap off and then that allows the fuel into the carbs and then we'll kick it over. Now it will be loud, so what I'll do, um, get it started, then uh, once it's up to temperature, I'll make all the adjustments to the idle speed and everything that I need to do. Idle speed is there, simply turn that knob and you'll be able to see it on the screen. So what I'll do, I'll do all that, I'll get the idle speed adjusted and then I'll bring it back in and we'll talk about how we actually carry out the um, adjustments. Okay, 
that is the bike up to temperature. What I did was I basically ran it, it took about five minutes or so, uh, and when the fan kicked in, that's, as far as I'm concerned, up to temperature. So now we are ready to begin the synchronization process. Um, I did set the idle, uh, it was a little bit high, so I lowered it down a touch, and it's roughly in the, in the ballpark where it needs to be. Okay. What we need to do next is obviously we need to prep the carburetors for synchronization. So I need to get me gauges out, plumb them all in, and that's what we'll do next. Right, um, I don't know whether you could tell on the video or not. Uh, the bike was idling okay. Um, it was a little bit lumpy, so a carb balance is definitely in order. The, the cylinders were definitely not in sync. You could, you could just hear the, the, the sound that the engine was making. It just didn't sound quite right. Um, certainly wasn't smooth anyway. Not, uh, not, well, not as smooth as I would expect a nice triple to be. Okay, what I've done here, uh, I've hung me gauges from the, uh, from the roof so we, can, so we can all see them. And what we need to do is we need to connect them up to the carburetors. Now, obviously because this is a three cylinder engine, we don't need to worry about the fourth one. We're only gonna use three, um, obviously. So what we need to do is we need to connect each one of these tubes to a carburetor. So obviously that one's going to go to carb one, this one to carb two, and then the third one to carb three. Now, what is important to uh, understand with this is that the carburetors have a reference carb. Now on these triples, certainly on this bike anyway, the reference carburetor is number two. So number two is totally non-adjustable. Um, it cannot be adjusted. What we'll do is adjust one and three to be the same as two. So that is how we're balancing them. We're basically making one and three the same as cylinder two. And then all the vacuum will be fine and the air fuel mixture will, will, should be perfect. So what we need to do is just here on the top cap, we've got this little, we've got this little um, vacuum cover. Same on cylinder two. Um, I'll pop that off. It's quite hard to get into without burning my hand, being seen as the, the engine is obviously hot. Now be careful with these because these little stubs do like to snap off if you're a little bit too forceful with them. So let me get a screwdriver and give that a gentle bit of persuasion. It's quite hard to get into the cylinder too. There we go, we got it off. And then cylinder three over here, this hose that goes up to the pet cock um, actually connects to the same point on cylinder three. So. We can pull that off and put that to one side because we don't need that right now. So let me put them down there because we'll put them back on again later on. And then it's simply a case of connecting the hose from the vacuum gauge to the vacuum takeoff on each of the carburetors. So what I'll do, I'll get all three plumbed on and then we'll bring it back in. Right. As you can see, we've got, the, we've got the hoses from each of the vacuums, one to one, two to two, three to three, all the way across, as you can see. Now, what we need to do now is basically start the bike. Now, um, I don't expect these needles to be in line with each other, but that's what the ultimate aim of this is. Whatever number two says is what we need to get three and one to basically read. Now, what we're gonna be adjusting, if we look just down here, right in here you can see this screw here that it, which i'm just touching with my the end of my screwdriver in fact let me get a torch i'll just grab the torch here we go this should help so that there what i'm touching with my, the end of my screwdriver now is the screw for adjusting carb number one and likewise on carb number three it's just down here again at the end of my screwdriver just there and that's the one that just carb number three so those are what we're going to be doing that's what we're going to be um, turning in order to make the adjustments that are necessary to bring one and three um, to the same state as cylinder two so what we'll do we'll we'll get the bike started and um, give it a couple of minutes of running just to make because obviously it's been off for about 10 minutes so it will start to cool down again but um, I, I don't expect the, uh, the idle speed to be correct either because obviously th there's a few different factors that um, can influence that. So what I'll do, I'll fire up the bike. You're not gonna be able to hear me because it's quite loud and we're in an enclosed garage. I will 
pay attention to what's going on with these um, dials and I will make the adjustments as necessary. Now what we may find with these needles is that they flutter quite a lot and if they flutter what we can do is we can adjust these and that will um, smooth out the, the needles. Um, obviously if you do it too far though you will actually completely block the vacuum to, to, the, uh, to the gauge so that's worth bearing in mind. So let me get it started, we'll, we'll crack on, I'll make the adjustments and then what we need to do is as we make each one just give the, the, the throttle a little blip and let it settle again back to idle and then move on to the next carb. Important thing to note is as you're making the adjustment though don't put any untoward pressure against it because what you will be doing is actually influencing the throttle uh, butterflies. So what you're doing is just adjusting the screw, blipping the throttle checking the reading and then moving on to the next one. Simple as that. So let's get it fired up. Okay, they're not too far out, as you can see. Number one and number three are ever so slightly high. Adjust these to take the flutter out of the needles. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make an adjustment. For now, I am happy that these carburetors are synchronized. Now, it really is that easy, guys. It's not difficult at all. Um, obviously, if you've got a four-cylinder engine, then it, the, the process is no different. You're just using this fourth um, gauge for the fourth carburetor. Um, you need to look at the manual, though, to find out which one the reference is. I know on the four-cylinder Triumphs, uh, carburetor three is the reference. Uh, carburetor so be mindful of that you, you will be able to tell by looking at it because obviously one of them won't have any adjustment next to it so um, you should be able to figure it out if you haven't got a manual anyway guys what I need to do next is obviously disconnect all of my vacuum hoses and then that is just finished with the gauges what I need to do now is refit the hose onto carb number three, which goes to the pet cock. And then my little takeoff blanks go on cylinders one and two. Okay, or well, one and two, should I say. Right, that 
is it. All I need to do now really is refit the uh, refit the fuel tank and the bike is as good as done. So let me pop that to one side. Let's fire up again. So yeah, uh, I did make an adjustment to the idle speed. Um, I brought it, it was, it was a slightly below 1,000. Um, so what I've done is I've just brought it back up. And that is the job done, guys. Uh, it really was that easy. It's not a difficult task at all, but um, I do know that some people will take their bike to a dealer in order to do that. I, I understand if you don't have the equipment, but those vacuum gauges are so cheap. I think they're less than 30 pounds and you've got them for life. Um, so it's worth, worth getting some. Anyway, guys, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the bike back together and uh, we'll call it a day. Um, Obviously, emptying my uh, my temporary fuel tank back into my fuel can. Get the fuel tank on, and then uh, job done. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Join me on the socials, both Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Kev Shed. And I will see you all for the next video. Take care. Bye bye now.